My name is Anna and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Exponia working across the UK and Nordics. Hi, my name is Annabelle and I'm part of the data protection team here at Exponia and I'm teaching our upcoming GDPR Academy. And that's exactly what we actually wanted to talk to you about today. So we wanted to mention upon the GDPR best practices as well as talk about its impact on the marketing. So to kick off, my kind of biggest question for the past couple of months, Annabelle, has been, how exactly does GDPR impact marketing? So in terms of marketing, GDPR is important because GDPR is very customer centric and it's giving individuals rights over their data. So it's important in marketing that when emails are being sent out and when any communications are being sent or targeted to an individual, that you're thinking about the data that's being collected why it's being collected, how it's going to be processed, how long it's going to be kept for, and whether the answers to these questions are being transparently given to the customer and whether you're collecting this data in a fair way. Cool. So who would you then say is mostly affected by GDPR? So on the flip side to the actual customers who are on the receiving end of the marketing campaigns and those who have rights under GDPR are the marketers who are creating all this marketing content. So both of these parties really need to make sure that, that customers are exercising their rights under GDPR, but the individuals who are creating content to be used as marketing material are making sure that they're respecting GDPR. There also are now other people within organizations as part of a data protection team or someone who's called a data protection officer or your DPO who's making sure that within a company that the company is acting in a GDPR compliant manner and making sure that the rights of individuals are being respected by the marketing content that the company is releasing. Okay, so as a DPO then, what would your biggest advice towards any company be? So as a DPO, it's really important to make sure that you're keeping up to date with all the different security and privacy news in the privacy community, keeping up to date with different white papers and whether there's been any judgments or GDPR fines and undertaking other courses from certification organizations such as the IAPP or more uh, marketing orientated courses such as ours from Exponia, which is our GDPR Academy. So as part of your role, I would imagine that you work across clients a lot, right? Yes, that's true. So before working in the data protection department, I was actually a consultant in client services here at Exponia. So I was even more client facing a few months ago before moving into the data protection department. But still now I have regular calls with our clients to check that they're okay with whether they are GDPR compliant and if they have any questions. Okay, so what would be the most like frequently asked questions? So in the last few months, the most frequently asked question has been around cookie banners because there has been a new judgment about how consent needs to be collected for um, dropping a cookie on an individual's device. So because of this change in the law or this clarification, a lot of our clients have been asking us whether their current cookie banners are actually compliant and whether they, they need to make adjustments. Other than this sort of nuance in the law, there's also been a lot of questions around the general aspects under GDPR, such as gaining consent from individuals, how long you can hold data for, and these different aspects that you need to consider when you're collecting information and data. Okay, and in terms of like enterprise grade companies, what would you say are the most GDPR related issues? So for enterprise grade companies, the issues that they might run into will be the same problems as in SMEs, but they'll be more complicated because the type of data that larger enterprise companies are normally collecting are more sensitive level, level or types of data. So they could be health data or uh, banking information. And because this information is more uh, sensitive in the way that if it is leaked or it, if, if it is connected to a customer profile, it can have wider implications on an individual. It is important that this data is under more barriers or levels of compliance and to ensure that GDPR is respected and general security principles are respected around this type of data. Okay, and what businesses would you say are mostly encouraged to become GDPR compliant then? 
So all citizens in the EU can exercise their rights under GDPR. So it's important that any company that is targeting citizens within the EU is GDPR compliant, as if there is something on their website that is not, any, any citizen within the EU can then exercise their rights and can file a complaint to their commission or their local data protection office. Okay. And my kind of biggest question and like most important one for me, what are some practical tips in order to implement GDPR as a marketer? Okay, like, of course. Like, where are you about? What should I pay more attention to? What should I be more careful with? Yes, yeah, so the classic question that we get a lot is, can I send this email to this individual? Um, can I send it under legitimate interest, for example? So is this an email that the individual would expect to receive, even though they haven't actually explicitly ticked um, the consent box? And sometimes this can be so an abandoned cart email, for example. Say, for example, an individual put something in their cart, uh, in their basket, and then they walked they close the browser and they basically walk away from the website and then you want to send an email to them to say, hey, come back, complete your purchase and actually get to the checkout page and pay and purchase the item. Um, sending this email can be done under legitimate interest under certain circumstances and this is definitely um, something that marketers need to consider is that there is flexibility in the GDPR and as long as you're respecting the spirit of GDPR, so keeping the customer's data rights central to what you're doing, um, you can still be creative in how you're implementing marketing and making sure that you're keeping your brand focus and really developing this relationship with the people who are sharing information with you. Okay, and in terms of different platforms or like places where I can start learning more about GDPR, what would you recommend? So of course, there's lots of courses out there, but Exponia right now, we are running a GDPR Academy, which will be starting very soon, and we still have a few seats left. So if you want to join us, then it would be an excellent opportunity to learn more about GDPR and how to implement it into your marketing practice. Can you please sign me up? And thank you very much for all your help today. This was greatly useful. Of course, no problem, anytime. Thank you. See you later. Bye.